Hello everybody, in this tutorial I'm going to go over how to properly use a bounding box component in the Grasshopper to use a multiple multiple pieces of geometry to, uh, to kind of panelize them on the surface using the morph component in, uh, in the Grasshopper. So what you want to start by doing is uh, open, the Rhino, open the Rhino file, we'll start from scratch. Um, I'm going to create a quick surface um, using uh, some curves in the loft command uh, that's going to be sort of a framework for our bounding box uh, exercise. So let's first start by going to a front view, selecting a curve. And let's draw a let's draw us a nice um, nice curve. We can turn on the control points and uh, kind of give it play around with the shape a little bit. Um, hit escape to get out of that. So once we have that, we can go to um, to a top view, type in copy, um, and we can just copy it up a few times. Um, once we do that, we can select from the top view, turn on the control points, and um, make it a little bit more complex, I would say. So we can repeat that same thing that we've been doing on all four of the curves. Here they are. Okay, so once we have the once we have the curves, we can proceed on to um, to the grasshopper. Let's type in grasshopper. Let me clear that off. Um, that will bring up the grasshopper command. Um, we want to start off by uh, creating a bringing in a curve geometry from the parameter and geometry. Bring in the curve right click on the curve and do set multiple curves and the order in which we uh, select those curves do matter so go from one side to the other selecting them one by one then hit space also um, we want to right click on it and hit reparametricize what does that what that does it, it it clears the internal values of the curve and it sort of uh, makes it uniform so that the beginning of the curve starts for example on this side so it's zero and the other end of the curve is one versus uh, it could have been something else um, all right once we have the curve the curve selected we want to go to a surface freeform and the loft let's bring in the loft uh, you want to connect the curve to the to the left C input, and you can see right away that we've created some sort of uh, surface here. Um, next thing we want to do to be able to penalize it, we want to we want to divide that. So you want to go to a math tab. You want to go to a domain and divide domain square which is a two-dimensional now you want to connect the output of that loft into the eye and from the parameter parameters tab go to special and bring down a number slider and let's bring in two of them double click on the slider um, Let's change it to uh, to integer numbers. Let's click on N. Uh, set the minimum to zero, maximum to um, say twenty. And set the actual value to be you know, say a ten. Do the same thing for the other. End. And this time set it to twenty. 
So what this does is going to divide that surface that we've created into a 10 by 20 sort of grid by connecting 10 U and a 22 V that sort of divides it. We can't really see it right now, but um, I assure you it does that. Um, okay. Next thing we want to do is out of those subdivisions, we want to separate them all out and create a surface box out of those. So for that, we want to go to a transform tab. I uh, want to go to morph and bring down the surface box. I'm going to connect the, the subdivision list into the surface box. Um, sorry, I actually got it to the wrong one. Uh, you want to connect the domain in here. You want to grab the loft to come in into the surface. Now you start seeing the subdivisions as they get created. Now the last component, the input for the surface box is the height. Uh, let's bring down another number slider. Uh, actually, let's leave it as a as a floating point. Um, so let me give it. A, uh, we can do actually three, set the maximum to so let's say two. Um, let's set this value to one point five, and bring it into height. Uh, so what that does is actually it controls the height of the, uh, the surface box that we just created. Um, the reason why I say it's 1.5 is that my grasshopper units are set to meters. So it's a 1.5 meter panel. Um, maybe it's still too thick. Let's set to 1 meter. So we have our surface box. And um, so we're kind of ready to uh, panelize that um, by creating another piece of geometry. So let's go back. To minimize that, go back to um, Grasshopper, um, I mean Rhino main window, and let's let's start with something simple, let's start with a box. So we have created ourselves. piece of geometry. Um, so you want to go to a parameter tab to be able to bring it into Grasshopper. You want to go to the geometry and um, bring down another geometry, right click on it, set one geometry, select the, the box that we've just created. Once we have that, um, we can use the morph tool. So if we go to transform morph um, box morph and hook up the geometry to the geometry input and also if we hook up the geometry to, uh, to a reference box input and from the surface box which will be the target box so basically what we're saying it, what the morph tool does is that we're telling it that we want this box to be handled and put inside of each one of those boxes. So each one of the corners of this box will be matched with the corners of each one of the surface boxes that we've created created here. Let's watch it happen. And there you go. So this is our basic panel panelization. Now the whole point of this exercise was to talk about the bounding box. And what the bounding box allows you is to is to sort of go back to our uh, the geometry that we want to panelize and um, let's say that we want to have something else on top of that so now Imagine that you want to, instead of unifying them or using the boolean commands to, to kind of merge them together or group them together, we can use a, you can use a bounding box to kind of do that grouping for us. So let's go to a surface primitive bounding box. 
Um, let's disconnect. Let's disconnect those by right clicking, disconnect, and disconnect all. So now our input input for the bounding box will be the geometry. Uh, let's hold on. Actually, you want to right click on the geometry and clear all the values first, and then set multiple geometries. And now we can select both of the geometries that we just created. Now connect that to the bounding box input. So you can see it creates a bounding box, but it only bounds um, each one of those separately. So it kind of it kind of creates two bounding boxes for each one of them. Um, how if you want to create just one main bounding box, you want to right click on the U, which is the unify, and you want to set it to true. And what that does is it creates one kind of main bounding box that bounds both of those geometries. Um, now you want to connect the bounding box to the reference. So now this bounding box those points become reference for what gets panel what gets kind of placed inside of those panels. So this point will get matched to this point, this point will get matched to this point, and so on, and each one of the individual ones. Um, of course we want to connect the geometry into the geometry for the morph. Let's let it process it. Uh, now we see you start getting something weird. Um, okay, what the problem is here right now is that the bound, the output of the bounding box is um, two pieces of geometry. So our list only contains two items, and our list from here, the output of the, the surface box, we actually have twenty times ten. We have two hundred boxes to kind of match. And what the morph component set is uh, to the longest list. So kind of um, one gets matched to one, two gets matched to two, three gets matched to nothing. So it so it kind of gets matched back to one, and then it repeats itself all along. If we set that to the cross reference, we'll see that each one of the objects contained within the bounding box will get matched to one of the boxes. And this way, and this way, we are getting something like this. Let's um, make this a little bit thicker. You see it better. The geometry is on the surface is a little funky, so takes a bit of time to uh, to process it. But yeah, here it is. You can see how you can panel, you can panelize surfaces, uh, surface divisions with multiple objects by using bounding box as a as a reference for the for the section box. Um, it's quite a powerful tool. There's other ways of doing that. Um, I'm probably gonna go over them next time. Um, I hope you've enjoyed it, and. Uh, See you soon.